Hello and welcome to Radiator Springs Raceway, the second course in the chase for my Toy Box Racing Cup. This race course isn't the most creative course that I've built, but I couldn't do a racing series without including Radiator Springs. Even so, this track does have some tricky obstacles and features a thrilling jump over a canyon, so I think we can look forward to some exciting racing today. Joining me for this episode is the host for this course, number 95 himself, Lightning McQueen, winner of seven Piston Cups, something that only one other racer has ever achieved. And I'm sure he's anticipating another win here on his home turf. Well, it's time to get this race underway. Racers to the starting line, please. Okay, here we go. Radiator Springs Raceway. I'm going to intentionally hang back from those three. Let them fight it out for first place. I'll catch up with them soon enough. <laughs> they got all the weapons though. <laughs> you might have missed it there, but there was a uh, dust devil. That's the first obstacle. And then we got a sharp turn here. And a little tunnel. And then we're coming up to the next obstacle, which is a simple one. It's a very narrow bridge with no railing. So it's easy enough. Uh, it's a simple enough obstacle, but it's not necessarily easy. And here's the canyon jump. And now we have a choice of which way to go. We can take the shortcut like Meter did, or the long way. I'll take the long way here just to show you what's this way. We got some speed boosts to kind of help make up for the shorter track the other direction. I'm in third place. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll catch up quick enough. Coming up on somebody here right now. And there's the dust devil. I'll make sure I avoid that. Alright, we're catching up to Mater. And the narrow bridge again. This time, this time we'll take the shortcut through the barn and along Willie's Butte. And we've got another dust devil over there to avoid. Gain some ground. We're in second place now. Final lap. Only Francesco ahead of me. launch that. <laughs> I don't care for that weapon anyway. I usually end up picking that thing up myself. I launch it out ahead of me and then I end up running over it. All right, got around that corner again over the bridge. And let's take the jump at turbo this time. Whoa! <laughs> out of control! All right, I might be able to win going the other way, but let's try this way. It'll be a little bit more exciting coming up on Francesco this way. Hey, I'm in first. <laughs> and there we go, I won. Cool. So that's my Radiator Springs Raceway course. Now I'll show you how to start building it. 
And if you don't want to stick around for the build part of this course, I hope you'll leave a comment before you go to let me know what you think of my new race course. Now, on with the build. Okay, I'm beginning in a brand new toy box, and I haven't done anything to it yet. So I'm going to begin by coming into the editor. And the first thing I'm going to put down is a boom box. And I'm going to put it over here in this corner out of the way. You're not going to need this, but I do. And then the second thing I'll put down, which is something you will need, oops, is the sky changer. We'll put that down. So the first thing I'll do is set the sky because that's going to determine the orientation of the toy box. So under properties, under sky, Disney Infinity, we are going to do the Radiator Spring Sky. And then I need to turn off the music. There we go. Okay, so now we have the sky. And I want my race to begin going through town. So we're going to be oriented that direction. And the spacing on this, well, let's go ahead and start, I guess, by putting down the, ter uh, by styling this terrain. So we're going to use the Carburetor County theme for all of the terrain in this toy box, and I'll go ahead and set the theme. I don't know that I'll put down any other terrain today, but this is what we're going to start with. Okay, and then in the terrain drawer, we're going to put a few terrain blocks in here for spacers, because I'm going to use this starting terrain and I want my racetrack to start in the right position. So we're going to begin we're going to put down three of these and one terrain cube, okay? And then I'm going to come down to this end and again I'm going to put down three of these large blocks like that. And we'll go ahead and move this start pad over here out of the way. All right. Those blocks there tell me where my racetrack start piece needs to go. So we're going to go up to the racing drawer here. Racetrack start is going to fit right in there, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and set the style for this to be the Cars Radiator Springs style. And now at this point, we can go ahead and take all of these temporary blocks out. Okay, so my racetrack is going to start going that direction towards the radiator cap there in the distance. All right. We're going to start with the very long racetrack piece, and I'm going to put down two of these, like this, and then we're going to look for the intersection, and I think that's actually to the right. Yeah. And this will be the intersection in town. Then I'll come back to the very long racetrack piece. We're going to put one more in here, followed by a long piece. And then we'll start with a short curve. Because the road curves right before it reaches the firehouse. And I tried to model this as closely as I could to kind of follow the actual Cars movie with the way the road goes. And so the road is going to head out of town and, whoops, sorry, did not want to do a long piece 
or a very long piece. I wanted to do a long piece. So the long followed by the short. Like that. So the road heads out of town past the firehouse and then around the hill where the radiator cap is. So we'll put a large racetrack curve in here and then it's going to go down alongside of the hill that the radiator cap is on. So we're going to put down one, two, three, four of those followed by two small racetrack pieces. And that seems a little weird, but those are needed in order to get everything to line up at the end. All right, and then we'll put the racetrack curve in here. So we're going around that hill that has the radiator cap on it. And if you hear some knocking in my... Uh, audio in the background. It's because I've got some people doing some roofing <laughs> on the house across the street. Okay, so three very long racetrack pieces. And then another curve. This one heading up into the mountains. Hopefully you can't hear that hammering, but... Uh, I don't know if it'll come through or not. All right, a very long piece. And then we're going to start going up the hill. And in the movie, you had a bunch of switchbacks going up. And I just don't have the memory for that. So I kind of abbreviated mine a little bit. And so we're going to just do a straight shot up the hill. And so we're going to start with the bowed racetrack ramp. And then move to the flat ramp. And we're going up six blocks in elevation, and each of these goes up one block. So I've got a ramp at the bottom. We're going to have an arch ramp at the top. We need four of these in between. So there's one, two, three, four, followed by the arch at the top. And that puts us up in the hills. And then we'll put in our sharp turn. And if you wanted to, if you don't like that, you could put another very large racetrack piece in here and make this come out a little further to give the player a little bit of warning. But since there's not a lot of features on this course, I thought that was just kind of an easy way to put in a bit of a challenge there. And I need to put in a short racetrack piece before I put in the next curve. Yeah, so that's that one. So I need to make sure when I turn this back around, it's far enough away from the cliff. So that's why we have that there. And then the short piece here, like that. And then we're looking for the racetrack piece that goes here, followed by another turn. Sometimes those snap into place pretty easily. Sometimes I have to fight with them a little bit. That one snapped into place. So we have a very long, and then just to make this easier, I'll just pick this piece up, put it down. All right, and then this goes into a canyon where you see the waterfall and a bridge. And we're going to put two of these down like that. Followed by another turn as you reach the back of the canyon. Mm -hmm. 
followed by two more long straight, very long straight pieces. And then another turn. And this would be about where the uh, wheel rim motel was, in case you're wondering, in the movie. Of course, I don't have a building piece for that, so I don't actually put that in here. And the player wouldn't really see it anyway, even if they did, because they're coming around the corner in this direction, so they're not going to be looking over that way. Okay, so two very short pieces, and then another turn. And then a very long racetrack. And at this point, we come to the jump over the canyon. And this uses the same technique that I had taught you when we built the previous race course, the Hawaiian Grand Prix. I'm using the exact same technique here, but I'll show you how you can use that to make a jump. There's a number of ways you could do it, but this is how I'm doing it for this toy box. So I'm going to start by building the actual track that's connected to the racetrack start piece, and then we'll build on top of it. So I've got the very long track here, and then we're going to start with the steep arch going down. And for this, I'm going to change the style because I don't want this to be visible. Part of this, because you're jumping the gap, is going to be visible from above, and potentially, and so I don't want this to be. So to get it to blend in with the terrain below, the closest thing we've got to the terrain for Radiator Springs is the Bunta Eve track. I'm going to set that to be the theme. So this is part of the main track, but it's not going to be used and it's going to be hidden. Okay. So that goes down one block, but the steep arch, the steep uh, ramp goes down two blocks. Since again we're going down a total of six, that means I need two of these. So at this point we've gone down five blocks. The steep bowed piece at the bottom puts us at six. So we are now down at the same level as the rest of the racetrack. And this gets us to ground level. And then we're going to put in a very long piece like that. Now we'll put in another long piece. This one though we're going to switch back to the cars theme because part of this piece will be visible. That should update here in a moment. There it goes. Alright, so that gets us back down onto the ground. Now for the jump, let me come back up here and pick up this piece and put it down. And I'm going to put another piece next to this as a spacer. And let me just grab my screenshot here. Uh, I took earlier to tell myself how I built this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with this long racetrack piece, and I'm going to put this out here on side. I'm using it as a measurement, and that I'll delete that here when I'm done. And then we're going to scroll over to the right to our bowed racetrack ramp. And in order to jump the gap um, in Toy Box Speedway on the Arendelle. Uh, course, they had some pickups at the edge of the cliff for, um, instead of boost pads, they had those green speedy pickups, and those worked with both the player's car and the AI cars. Well, I don't have anything like that in the toy box. They didn't make that available. All we have is the boost pad, and that only affects players' cars. The AI cars don't use the boost pads. And so because of that, I can't do my uh, jump quite the same way. I have to make sure that I'm elevated a little bit. And so that's why we're building this ramp. 
And so I'm going to put that uh, bowed piece in there with the gentle slope. And we're going to put in two of these flat piece racetracks. And so this is going to get us up above the level that we're here with this piece. And at this point I can go ahead and delete that. Okay. And now the gap. For that we are going to use come back over to the right, the racetrack piece. And what I want to do is connect this up here just so I can make sure that's lined up with that piece. But then I'm going to drop this down to the level of the road that we were on for the main track back here. And so this is our gap. So the next piece of road needs to start right here. That means I can now take this out. So because we're up far enough now, even the AI cars can clear this jump. So that's why we have it up that high. And we could slide it back a little bit further, but um, I think that's a good safe one. Because at this range, when you're jumping this gap, we're going to see a bit of a cliff edge underneath here, and we won't see the road. If I back this piece up any further, then we'll start to see the road that's down underneath, and I kind of want to hide that from the racers, from the player. Okay, so then we're going to come over here, and we're going to pick up a very short piece, followed by uh, the steep arch. And then we'll put in two of these. And again, this gets us down five blocks. And I could put this under here and connect it up onto the main track that way. But I'm actually not going to do that. Um, the player probably isn't going to notice the fact that there's a little bit of a piece of track here missing. And the other thing, too, is, is if one of the AI cars does happen to either miss this jump or when they land here, if the game tries to bring them down to the main track, this gives them a tunnel that they can use to get out. And so we're not blocking the AI cars. So that's why we're doing that. But that's our jump. And then we'll pack some terrain stuff around this later when we're done. All right, so the next piece then, as we keep building, see, so, yeah, one of those, one of those, okay. So then we're going to come back and pick up a very short piece, like this, and then the racetrack piece, like that. And then just to kind of make this interesting, we're going to put this racetrack right in here. And there's going to be an obstacle they have to steer around. So you're going to come off that hill and immediately have to turn right. And um, that can be kind of tricky sometimes. So <laughs> it makes an interesting little obstacle. And then we'll put a long piece on the end of that. Followed by a medium piece. Followed by a very short piece. So this is just shy. Actually, it is just a little bit longer. So we could actually put a long piece in here if we wanted to. Long, medium, very short. That was the medium, right? Yeah. Okay. But anyway, that's the distance that we need. And at this point, we put the split in, like that. And we have our shortcut through the barn, but I'll stay on the main road for the moment. So as we come to the right, and we pick up the racetrack curve, and we connect that, if we've laid out the rest of the track properly, this should now connect to our intersection in town. So one, two, 
three. Perfect. Just like that. And then coming out on the other side of this, we have a very long piece followed by a racetrack piece. Followed by a curve. And this is going to take us down along the back side of town and connect us back up with the racetrack start piece. So I need to put down five of these. Two, three, four, five, followed by a turn. <laughs> that one doesn't want to snap. There it goes. Okay. And then we need a medium piece followed by racetrack and the final turn. And that is now lined up with the racetrack start piece. And then we're going to put in a, let's see, actually two very long racetrack pieces. One, two, followed by the junction so that our side path can come in, followed by a medium piece, and that connects us, and you can see the starting, orange starting light there is on. So that's great. All right, and then we just need the side path. So for this, we're going to go ahead and put down another very long piece, and I'm going to change the style again. Since this is off-road, we're going to set this to Bunta Eve again. That, of course, is from Tatooine. Alright, and then we'll put down another very long piece and a racetrack piece. Followed by a racetrack left. Followed by three, or actually two, sorry, and a long. Two very longs and a long. And then we'll go ahead and put the racetrack curve in, and this is coming around Willie's Butte. All right. Followed by a medium. A very long. And our final piece, I think it's our final piece. Nope, a couple other pieces. We've got our short piece here first. And then we need a couple of small pieces to connect up to the junction. Like that. And there we go. There's our course. All right. Now the last thing I will do today is let's come over to the terrain drawer and just get some terrain underneath all of these uh, pieces. And I'm not going to put the oops, I'm not going to put the full terrain in today, but we'll get the bulk of it, uh, the bulk of the basic ground in. All right, and I want to make sure it looks like that is the same orientation texture-wise as the piece next to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one on that side, 
and we're going to come to on this side. So four wide. And then we're going to come two in this direction. All the way over and fill that in. And we're going to go seven in this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. And I will be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I filled in the terrain. So now all of the road is actually on the terrain. And I think that's all the terrain I'm going to put down today. We'll put the canyons and everything else in later. Uh, one thing I thought we might do, though, um, since it's really easy to do, <laughs> is go ahead and just put in the basic town. And uh, all of these pieces are under the uh, buildings category. And if we go to the right, you'll find the cars pieces listed under here. And so this is pretty easy to build. You can see these are all pretty much uh, self-contained pieces. So you just slap these down. Luigi's is on this corner as we're facing toward the uh, mountain peaks there. So that one goes there. And it takes a moment for these to uh, <laughs> pop in. And each time I put one of these down, you'll notice that uh, the memory jumps significantly. So let me just uh, grab my screenshot. Flows is the next one in the drawer. Of course, you have to have the cars playset for these. So this one we're going to put right here on this corner. Like that. The next one is Mater's Lot. And that's going to sit over here. I'm going to put this back just a little bit and we'll line it up uh, about there. The next one is Ramon's House of Body Art. That goes on this corner. And then we've got Fillmore's. We'll go ahead and put Sarge's in first, though, because this one uh, sits next to Flo's in the actual game, or in the actual movie. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's as close as I can get it, because then it bumps in. So that's fine. And then Fillmore's goes next to that. That's just enough room to sit in there, like that. Uh, we did Sarge's. Radiator Springs Curios, that goes on this corner. Like this. And then we have the Cozy Cone. But before I can put that in, I need to move these below the terrain. Get them out of the way. And now we can put the cozy cone down. Going to sit up here next to the road, about like that. That's as close as I can get it to the piece on the right. Okay, and the last piece we'll put in is the farm. And I'm going to put this over here. And you'll notice you can actually place buildings on top of the road. <laughs> And so I'm going to put this right up here on the edge of this uh, road seam, just like that. And this gives the player the opportunity to drive through the building as part of the side path. So you'll notice this, uh, this piece here dead ends right in front of the building. 
So that's going to go there. And then the final piece is the firehouse at the end of the street. And for that, let's see, that's right here, courthouse. Just like that. And it's lined up with the middle of the street there. And there is an interior decoration with Stanley's statue that I could bring out and put out here, but I decided not to do that uh, because as the players come around this tight corner, um, it's real easy to get hung up on that, so I decided not to do that. But that's the basic town right there. And that looks really, really good. And I'll put the other buildings in on the end down there. <laughs> there we go. Did took away that orange light. That's what I was looking for. All right. Well, I think that's enough for today. Next time, I'll block in the rest of the terrain for this course. Before you go, please hit the like button if you enjoyed my new Radiator Springs race course today, and leave a comment to let me know. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, and you enjoy what I'm doing in Disney Infinity, just click my photo in the lower right corner, and then you'll never miss an episode. Well, that's all for me today. Have a great weekend.